Welcome everyone. This is a cookie recipe from the noviceshefblog.com. I have substituted the egg for cornstarch and water to make it vegan. Um, the butter is substituted for vegan margarine and I also lowered the sugar in the original recipe by substituting some sucralose for the sugar. The first thing you're going to want to do is put two cups of flour in a large bowl. Um, if you wanted to use almond flour, you're going to want to check to see if it's a one-to-one -one ratio for all-purpose flour. I used whole wheat flour for um, a little bit healthier glycemic index. And then we're going to add a half teaspoon of baking powder, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and we're going to mix those dry ingredients together and then set them aside. One cup of butter is two sticks. This happens to be a margarine, which is, um, this particular kind of margarine is vegan. So I'm going to substitute margarine instead of butter. I do it this way because the cholesterol is better and it's also cheaper. So we're going to throw a cup of butter into the stand mixer and then we'll be adding our sugar and creaming that together in a minute. If you're going for full sugar you'll be doing three-fourths cup of white sugar. Um, in my substitution I'm going to be doing two-fourths cup of sucralose, which is Splenda or the cheapest sugar substitute there is really. And then one fourth cup of real sugar or white sugar or refined sugar, whatever you want to call it. If you hear me call something real or fake in my recipes, it just means it's not the version you're typically used to um, seeing in a recipe. Off camera I made my egg replacer using one tablespoon of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water and then I whisked that together in a small bowl before adding it to the larger stand mixer. I'm not sure about other vegan egg replacers, but cornstarch and water has basically no flavor. And I've found in a majority of the recipes I've used it for, for baking, it uh, actually even um, to make my black bean burgers, it does not change the outcome of the recipe if you use that as a substitute instead of eggs. So please like, share, and subscribe if you're enjoying this recipe so far. It really helps us out. Then we're going to be adding two teaspoons of almond extract. And the entire reason I looked up uh, this recipe in the first place was because my husband bought this almond extract a while back and he no longer uses it for anything. So I had to get rid of it. Once that's mixed, you'll add the dry ingredients. The recipe said to add um, in three batches, but I think you can get away with doing it uh, a half at a time.
So I'm making this recipe because I had extra almond extract to use up and I'm curious what is the most unusual thing or your favorite thing that you've made using something that you had to use up. Um, let me know in the comments and if you have a link to share the recipe I'd love to try that out especially if it's something I have to use up to. I don't like to waste ingredients so I typically always find some way to use it up or I'll give it to somebody else. Um, a lot of those online free giveaway groups like on Facebook, um, Buy Nothing or Freebox, I've seen that term used on both, they don't care if it's open. I would, I would take open food and I've had no trouble giving away open food too. So try that if you've got stuff that you can't actually use up in a recipe that you need to get rid of. It's definitely better than throwing it out or even composting it. Scrape down the sides of your bowl if necessary. The recipe says to roll one tablespoon of dough into a ball, but that seems a little small. Um, so I'm doing one to two inches, and that's what the dough looks like. It's typical cookie dough, like the, the egg replacer turned out great on this one. Um, nice and thick, not too liquidy, not too dry, doesn't stick to your hands. Make balls out of all of them. And then you're going to flatten with your hand, your palm really. And it was kind of a quick shot there, but I wet my palm with water and used that to flatten the cookies because it doesn't stick to your palm that way. And I guess the water is... Um, it must evaporate very quickly in the oven. It doesn't really change the consistency of the cookies if you happen to use water to flatten them down. recipe says to bake them for 8 minutes at 375 degrees and in the meantime we're going to make our powdered sugar icing. Um, you can totally stop at this point and just eat the cookies without the icing. It, they taste fine without it. They're very soft. Um, but I'm going to do half the icing recipe. It should be one full cup of white sugar or powdered sugar really. Um, but I'm going to do half, and so I'm doing a quarter cup of sucralose and a quarter cup of refined white sugar. I'm going to throw it in my Vitamix blender to grind it up enough so that it becomes powdered sugar. I don't know if this is something that's possible with all blenders. I think any high-powered blender could turn refined sugar into powdered sugar. I no longer keep powdered sugar in the house um, because it's so easy just to make whatever quantity I need when I need it using the blender. And so I'm going to be doing essentially half a cup of powdered sugar and mixing that. And I tried to show you what it looked like, but the powdered sugar didn't want to move. It was like stuck in place or something. It was, it must have been densely packed. That's probably what it was. So I'm here, I'm trying to like struggle with it. Then put the powdered sugar in a bowl, and you're going to add, it says, two tablespoons of milk or water and one teaspoon of almond extract. I would recommend not doing milk, even if you're not worried about the vegan uh, aspect of this or if you're using vegan milk, because if you do, you'll have to store these in the refrigerator, and that just seems like unnecessary to me. Cookies can be stored in the pantry or on the counter in a cookie jar, so just do it that way. 
Um, so I went ahead and put two tablespoons of water and one teaspoon of almond extract. And then as I was whisking it at this point, I thought to myself, oh no, I used half the quantity of sugar to, as the recipe called for. I should have used half the quantity of liquid as well because it was too thin. So I'm going to try another quarter cup of sucralose to see if that thickens it enough and we will proceed from there. So tasting the icing now, and it wasn't that great. Usually when there's, eh, I think whenever you bake sucralose, it's not as bad as when you taste it raw. The It was more sucralose than I needed. So I did half sucralose, half sugar, another quarter cup of sugar. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Whisk your icing. Whisk your icing. And now this consistency looks thick enough. So here's the cookies after the eight minutes. They don't look that great to me, even though the recipe said they would look raw. So I threw them back in for another five minutes to see if um, they looked really raw. I'm sorry. And I didn't show you, but um, they didn't look all that different after I took them out after five minutes, but I decided they were done enough. So I'm cooling them on my cooling rack. So I let them cool completely before adding the icing, otherwise the icing will like get absorbed directly into the middle of the cookie and it won't stay on the top. Um, I started off using, what is this tool called? Silicone brush. Yep, that thing. For like barbecue sauce and whatever. I typically use it for not barbecue related tasks. And um, the icing wasn't quite as opaque as the photos on the blog show. Um, so I started dunking the cookies like directly into the icing. Um, the reason I wanted to do a half batch of icing was because usually on in any recipe I look up, the icing is ridiculously like way more than I ever need. So I always go half batch, but this time I actually used up all the icing. So I'm glad that I messed up the liquid quantity and ended up doing a full batch of icing. Um, one thing I will say is that if you're using a cooling rack like this, don't because the icing will drip all the way down and your counters will be stained with icing and your husband will come home and say, why does the counter look like there's a sheet of glass on it after you tried cleaning it up? Um, so that was just dumb. I would have just left them on the cookie sheet. Um, and then the recipe says to let these like harden or let the icing solidify for 10 minutes before you try eating them. So they definitely did harden, but it's not an opaque looking icing as the photos show. I don't know how you get that. The cookies are soft, they're sweet, they're the right texture, and I really love this recipe. If you guys want to see more, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Happy eating!